So I don't really know how to start this video other than to say that there is a lot that I could say and that I would say if I had more time, but I'm trying to keep this to the point. As a white person, I know that I will never understand what it's like to live as a black person in this country. But there are certain things that are very clear to me and to anyone paying attention to what's currently happening in America. Up to now, I've had the privilege as a white person to consider that these things went without saying or to let other people say them for me. I did this under the pretense that it wasn't my place and that others have already said it better than I ever could. Anyone that knows me knows that I'm much more comfortable behind a camera rather than in front of one. But it is clear to me that at this particular moment, my comfort cannot take precedence over the fact that I could be using my voice and my privilege to do some good and spread some awareness. My discomfort is nothing compared to what others have to live with every single day in this country. And it's clear that my silence now would be equal to complicity and cowardice. So what would I say with this platform that I have? First, I would say that it's very clear to me that in this country, founded on the presumption that all are created equal, that people of color suffer a disproportionate amount of degradation and violence at the hands of those institutions meant to defend the rights and freedoms of all. Racism is not the only institutional injustice that plagues our country, but it has proven to be perhaps the deadliest. Sexism against women is pervasive and exhausting, but the challenges that I face for being a woman with white skin are nothing compared to the constant fear, exhaustion, and uncertainty that many people endure just by virtue of having black or brown skin. If you believe that a black person is truly equal to a white person in the eyes of the law in this country, and in the eyes of the people that carry out the law, you have not been paying attention and you need to do better. Second, it is clear to me that a system will change only when it wants to change, and that when people in positions of authority do nothing in response to widespread protest and activism, those people should not be surprised when those protests then turn to violence to try to force action. When a system proves that the destruction of property gets more attention and action than the destruction of lives, something in that system needs to change. The looting and burning that has been happening has now become a convenient excuse used by authorities to put down peaceful and justifiable demonstrations with tear gas and rubber bullets. If the fact that a Target store was ransacked causes you to question or rescind your support of the movement against racially discriminate police brutality and legally sanctioned murder, then I would challenge you to take a hard look at your own beliefs and priorities. Windows once destroyed can be replaced. Buildings once burned down can be rebuilt. Inventories, once depleted, can be restocked. But a life once destroyed can never be rebuilt, recovered, or replaced. If you are at all surprised or appalled at the hurt and rage that you're witnessing in communities, in communities of color today, after decades of them trying to tell us just how destructive and discriminatory the police have been and continue to be to those communities, you have not been paying attention and you need to do better. Third, when I wrote this originally, I had a comment here about how I recognize that there are some shining examples out there of police officers who serve and protect their communities with grace and humility, and how I respect those officers in particular. But after waking up today to watch, yet again, the police come out in force to deny the people their right to peacefully protest, to watch police destroy medical tents and target medics with rubber bullets, to watch them tackle and arrest people for the crime of walking home, to watch officers tase and spray and beat young men and women for talking while black, driving while black, walking down the street while black. Because of all of that, I can no longer say in good conscience or with any sincerity that I stand with the good cops against the bad. Because the evidence of my eyes and ears makes it clear that this is not an issue of a few bad apples. It is an ongoing, systemic, institutional problem, and it will not go away unless we enact some kind of institutional reform. If good cops cannot or will not turn to other cops and say, hey, don't do that, that's not okay, then incidents like the murder of George Floyd will keep happening, and we will have done nothing to prevent it. We are only seeing the tip of the iceberg right now in terms of the violence enacted against communities of color in this country. Beneath the surface, there is a whole glacier of evidence that suggests that the way the police operate cannot continue without violent consequences. If this is what I as a white person am seeing, imagine what a black person sees every day of his or her life. For every video surfacing now, there are hundreds and thousands of incidents that go unrecorded and unreported all the time. And that is why so many people are demanding we defund and demilitarize the police. 
because currently this system is not working. As white people, we're taught to look up to police officers as pillars of safety in our communities, deserving of adoration and respect. We learn to look to police for protection, but black boys and girls are taught by example after example after example that even if you do nothing wrong and everything right, a police officer may still decide to end your life, and they may do so with impunity. It is clear to me that to call the police on a black man in this country, no matter the cause, justified or otherwise, nonviolent or otherwise, is to gamble with that man's life. If you believe that the death of George Floyd was an isolated incident and not part of a recurring pattern of excessive police brutality against people of color specifically, you have not been paying attention and you need to do better. I'm honestly not sure what I'm trying to accomplish with this video other than to maybe start a conversation and add to the chorus of voices saying that we see the violence enacted on communities of color here and we are not okay with it. Maybe it's just more noise, but this is the medium I have and this is how I'm choosing to use it. That said, as a white person, I understand that my voice needs to take a backseat right now in favor of listening to and amplifying the voices of communities suffering from racial discrimination and violence. Over the past couple months, I've been working to put together a small video studio here in Boulder for educators and creators to use as a resource for video production, especially given the rising importance of online education during this pandemic. This video will now serve as the inaugural video for this studio space, and I'd like to end it by offering to donate the space and the capabilities I have here to any activists or protesters in the Denver-Boulder area who might want to use video to help get their message out about these realities and the efforts to change them. To all the communities protesting across the country, you matter and your lives matter. Please look out for each other in the coming days and know that the world sees you and supports you. Much love. Stay safe.